Snell with the blog, Joyous Garden, and snake plants are very popular. House plants, there are many species and varieties of them, and today I want to share with you fun five types of snake plants that you might want to add to your houseplant tribe. So we have done blog posts and videos on snake plant care, snake plant repotting, snake, snake plant soil, snake plant propagation, propagation by leaf cuttings, snake plant Q&As. There's a lot of them. I will leave them in the description box down below along with the blog post that goes along with this video because what I'm going to do is briefly cover some basic care points and then I'm going to go on to the individual snake plants. You'll see them and I will tell you approximately how big they get and why I love them. <laughs> so anyway, let's get on with this right now. So in terms of care, we'll start where I always do exposure or light. They do best in a moderate light, nice bright light. That's their sweet spot. Something like the jade here that's much darker will tolerate low light and this here but something like the gold star needs that moderate to almost highish light to keep the color looking great oh and one thing I forgot to say about the exposure in terms of sunlight they do not like hot direct light if you have them in a hot window say a south window or a west window and here in Tucson and like the summer in an east way window even, they will burn. Watering. What is good to know about snake plants is that they are succulents. So you water them when dry. You will kill them fairly fast by watering them too often. For instance, uh, these, first of all, I live in Tucson, Arizona. I live in the desert, so it gets really warm here. We're like the third sunniest state in the country so we have a lot of sun so I'll probably water my plants more often than you do yours but I water these in the summer about every seven days and in the winter it's about every 10 days that's because they are in smaller pots now I'm going to show you my five foot trifasciata which in the winter which it is now at end of January I think I said that, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, yes it is. <laughs> I water that about every two months and it's about every month in the summer, but it's much bigger in, and in a bigger pot. Here it comes up right now. In terms of temperature, they're flexible. They can take it cool. They can take it warm. I have one that grows outside here which you can't see. It grows outdoors all year long. We can get into the 30s in the winter, in the evenings, and in the summer. In the days, we can get up to 105. <laughs> so they will tolerate a range of temperature. In terms of humidity, they do great in our homes, which tend to have drier air. Here in the desert, as I said, I've got one outdoors, a bunch of them indoors. You might see a couple of little brown leaf tips, which is a reaction to the dry air. Not that many. They do great indoors. So in terms of fertilizing, I fertilize my house plants about every three weeks in the growing season, but we have a long growing season here, a lot of sun. Um, I'll start next month and probably mid to end of February. We're getting sunnier and warmer, so I just uh, like to give my house plants an extra boost. And I use the fertilizer at half the recommended strength. And the ones I use, um, I don't combine them, but I use them alternately. And I write it down in my calendar, which one I've used what week, so I do, um, uh, grow big which is what I sell it uh, I substituted for Eleanor's VF 11 because that doesn't seem to be around anymore um, I do maxi and I do 
uh, I forget what it's called, Grow Big, I think it's called Seymour. That doesn't sound right, but it's, a, it's another botanical fertilizer. They'll all be in the blog post. And for me, as I said, we have a long growing season. It can go from end of February, mid February, right through the end of October. For you, you, you may not start to fertilize until May and you might cut it off by September. Toxic to pets. I always include this because many of you have pets as I do also and I always consult the ASPCA website on this and yes they are considered to be toxic. You can go and see in what manner they are. All I'll say is that I have two cats and I've had cats my whole life and they have never bothered snake glands. But if it's a concern just keep it, keep it up out of reach. So the last thing I'm going to cover under these brief care points is soil. I use for my snake plants about half of a good potting soil formulated for house plants and half succulent and cactus mix. And then I mix in a little compost. You just want it to be um, aerated, light, and very well draining. Okay, so I live in a very vegetated area. The houses are not close at all, but somebody just across the way behind me decided to start using a chainsaw. So we're inside. You might be able to see them better in here anyway. So this one, the first one is Sansevieria stucci. It actually gets large. It'll get about four to six feet indoors. And it, as it grows, I think it starts to look like horsetails. <laughs> it's kind of a cool plant, but this one is fun because it is one that ultimately does get taller. And this one is a sense of very Mikado fernwood. Um, this one I really like because it reminds me of grasses almost when it grows into a big clump. It's just be beautiful. It stays fairly vertical too. Um, I've seen a mature one that's about two feet tall, but I believe they, um, they max out indoors at about three feet tall. But I love the form and the color on this one. So the next one is the adorable Sansevieria starfish. I love the uh, form of it, this fan, like a starfish, and it has a beautiful silvery color to it too. And the largest I've seen one is about a foot tall. So this one you may have seen before. It is Sansevieria green jade, oftentimes just called jade. It is one of the bird's nest Sansevierias, and which are dwarf ones. This one gets about a foot tall, and it'll just get about probably 10 inches wide or so. But I just love the deep, deep green color on that, which is a nice contrast to a lot of the medium green house plants you might have. So the last one, which I happen to love, is um, the Sansevieria Gold Star. It is also a bird's nest Sansevieria, and this one gets about probably 8 to 10 inches, so it stays a little bit smaller, but what I love is this gorgeous chartreuse foliage on it, and... Uh, you need, as I said, you need a little bit more light for this one to keep the color vibrant on it like it is now. So one last look at them all. These three will stay the smallest and the other two will get larger, but I like to have some plants that stay smaller because I have plants that grow really fast and I have to repot them and prune them. So it's nice just to have um, some plants that have a little bit more of a control, controlled growth that I can sneak into spots here and there. Okay, back outside to say goodbye. It was only 15 minutes it stopped, but actually I think it worked out better because you could see the plants better inside. But boy, do we love our snake plants and they come in so many different sizes and leaf variegations and forms. They're really fun to have, but most importantly, easy to grow.
So I hope you have found this to be helpful. There's more information in the blog posts and all the other blog posts we've done about snake plants. They'll all be down below for you and on our website, joyousgarden.com. So come back for some more gardening goodness sometime. We do shorts every week, so be sure and check out those. Now let's get into our gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. As always, I thank you for watching and subscribing and all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye.